Hello, and I welcome you here to Rosa Sharon Lutheran Church as we gather together to worship our Lord. The text for our message today will come to us from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 36. Begin then in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We confess our sins to the Lord. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We've not loved you with our whole heart. We've not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today, then, which is, again, also the basis for our message, comes to us from Jeremiah chapter 36, verses 1 through 3, 20 to 24, and 27 to 32. In the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Take a scroll and write on it all the words that I have spoken to you against Israel and Judah and all the nations from the day I spoke to you, from the days of Josiah until now. It may be that the house of Judah will hear all the disaster that I intend to do to them, so that everyone may turn from his evil way, and that I may forgive their iniquity and their sin. So they went into the court of the king having put the scroll in the chamber of Elashima, the secretary, and they reported all the words to the king. Then the king sent Jehudi to get the scroll, and he took it from the chamber of Elashima, the secretary. And Jehudi read it to the king and all the officials who stood beside the king. It was the ninth month, and the king was sitting in the winter house, And there was a fire burning in the fire pot before him. And Jehudi read three or four columns. And as he would do so, the king would cut them off with a knife and throw them into the fire in the fire pot until the entire scroll was consumed in the fire that was in the fire pot. Yet neither the king nor any of his servants who heard all these words was afraid, nor did they tear their garments. Now after the king had burned the scroll with the words that Baruch wrote at Jeremiah's dictation, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Take another scroll and write on it all the former words that were in the first scroll that Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, had burned. And concerning Jehoiakim, king of Judah, you shall say, Thus says the Lord, You have burned the scroll, saying, Why have you written in it that the king of Babylon will certainly come and destroy this land and will cut off from it man and beast? Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning Jehoiakim, king of Judah, he shall have none to sit on the throne of David, and his dead body shall be cast out to the heat of the day and the frost by night. And I will punish him and his offspring and his servants for their iniquity. I will bring upon them and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem and upon the people of Judah all the disaster that I have pronounced against them, but they would not hear. Then Jeremiah took another scroll and gave it to Baruch the scribe, the son of Neriah, who wrote on it at the dictation of Jeremiah all the words of the scroll that Jehoiakim, king of Judah, had burned in the fire. And many similar words 
were added to them. This is the word of the Lord. Here then also reading from 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning with verse 18. Knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was forsaken before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by the obedience to the truth, for sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you've been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of the grass. The grass withers and the flower fails, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that is preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. Now at this time, I'd like to especially address uh, the children that are with us here today. Hey kids, I wanna direct your attention up to this, this box here. I don't know if you know what it is, but it's a paper shredder. You know, it's kind of a neat thing. You can take, take a sheet of paper you know, it's got all this nice writing, and I could read this here now. But you take a sheet of paper like this, and you put it in there and turn it on. Look at that. There it goes. And notice what happens to it. It's made into all kinds of little pieces, and you can't read it anymore. You could read about two letters of it, and that's about it. And so nobody could read that. And so sometimes people shred certain papers that they don't want anyone else to see or to read for one reason or another. But you know, in the, in the Bible reading I just read in the Old Testament reading, we learned about Jeremiah. And Jeremiah, <clears throat> Jeremiah was a prophet from God, and he was sent to speak God's word to the people and to the king. But King Jehoiakim didn't listen to God's word. Instead, he kind of took God's word and he, and he shredded it. Not in a paper shredder like this, but he, he cut it up in little pieces and then threw it in the fire. He shredded God's word. Now that certainly was not a good thing because God's word was, was really the only hope that he had. You know, today sometimes people shred God's word as well. Maybe not in a, in a paper shredder like this, but they try to get rid of God's word in their life. They don't want to listen to it. They avoid it. And this isn't good either. Because it's in God's word where we, we learn about Jesus. And we learn how Jesus, the perfect son of God, came down from heaven and came to this world and went to the cross to suffer and die for our sins. It is in the word of God that we learn that Jesus rose from the dead for us, and as we believe in him, God promises that he will forgive our sin, that he will raise us up, and he will give to you a place in heaven. A gift that is yours not by the works you do, but solely by faith in Jesus Christ. Oh, we need God's word. We shouldn't be shredding God's word or getting rid of it out of our lives. But sadly, sometimes we do that. So what happened in the story? What happened when King Jehoiakim shredded God's word? Well, I'm going to talk more about that in the sermon today, and I, I want you to listen very carefully to that. And then maybe at the end of the service today, tell mom or dad, what God did in response to that, what happened? And maybe you could talk a little bit about what we should do as well in our lives. 
And if you didn't quite catch it in the sermon, then ask mom and dad what happened. What did God do when Jehoiakim shredded the word of God? Amen. We read our gospel reading today through Matthew chapter 24, beginning with verse 32. Jesus said, From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, This generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. This is the gospel of the Lord. And we join together in confessing our common Christian faith as we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his own Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, paper shredders range in size from smaller units that are designed just to take a few sheets of paper to larger units that are meant for commercial use and may cost thousands of dollars. But regardless of the size, the make, or the model, we all know a little bit about paper shredders. Because today we meet Mr. Paper Shredder, King Jehoiakim. As I mentioned, our text is from Jeremiah 36, and listen again to verse 23. As Jehudi read three or four columns, King Jehoiakim would cut them off with a knife and throw them into the fire in the fire pot until the entire scroll was consumed in the fire that was in the fire pot. Oh, the Jays are wild here. Jehudi is in Judah and Jerusalem in 604 B.C., reading the book of Jeremiah, and King Jehoiakim is shredding it with a knife. I dare you to say that three times. But he shredded God's word. Through it, he got rid of his only hope that he would have. Oh, we know a few things about God's word being shredded in our lives, don't we? Now we destroy paper shredders, credit card statements, bank statements, other sensitive documents. But for King Jehoiakim, it was God's word, especially God's word in Jeremiah. But why would he do such a crazy thing, especially when Jeremiah is loaded with so many gospel promises of hope and salvation. I'll read a few of them for you. Jeremiah 23, verses 5 and 6. I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called, the Lord is our righteousness. Or this familiar verse that I suspect you know from Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for peace and not for evil, 
to give you a future and a hope. Or how about from Jeremiah 31, verse 13? I have loved you with an everlasting love. Or a little bit later in the chapter. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. And still later in the chapter, verse 34. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. What got into King Jehoiakim? That he would shred God's words of gospel and promise and hope. Oh, we know, don't we? I know. And I suspect you do as well. What got into King Jehoiakim? Well, it was Mr. Paper Shredder himself. The ultimate paper shredder. Oh, we don't know him by that name. We know him by other names. Liar, deceiver, dragon, demon, devil, Satan. Yes, it is Satan who has done it. It is Satan who has destroyed it. Satan desires to shred God's word from our lives so that we don't have any hope in God's word, any life in God's word, any forgiveness in God's word, any promise in God's word. Want some proof? A recent George Barna survey of Christians found some stunning results. 58% of Christians did not know who wrote the Sermon on the Mount, or who preached it, rather. It was Jesus. 52% did not know that the book of Jonah is in the Bible. Here's the one I find interesting. 70% did not know that the statement, God helps those who help themselves, is not in the Bible. Oh, it's not there. Search for it if you will. You will not find it. And 15% agreed that the Gospels are Matthew, Mark, Luther, and John. Satan's at work. And that's just among Christians. Satan has worked. We're trying to remove God's word from this world and this culture we live in. And we see it locally. We see it throughout the world. We see it in so many different places. Why does Satan shred God's word? So he can shred our lives. Satan meets us in the morning and he says, it's it's pointless, it's hopeless, you might as well go back to bed. He gets us to look at ourselves and he says, you're not smart enough, strong enough, uh, clever enough, good looking enough, able enough. You can't do it. He strives to tear us down. At the end of the day, he gets us to think, you're a sorry excuse of a Christian. I mean, look at all the sins you committed to this day. God is done with you. God is finished with you. You're over. Oh, if we don't have God's word pushing back against Satan's lies, Satan chews us up and he spits us out. He shreds us. Satan seeks to shred God's word from our lives, but how does he do so? Well, in many different ways. God's word is shredded when we neglect regular worship. When we become convinced that, well, we don't have to go to church to be a Christian. God's word is shredded from our lives when we don't read our children Bible stories or bring them to worship or Sunday school. God's word is shredded from our lives when we don't heed God's word and pass it on to the next generation. God's word is shredded from our lives when we neglect God's words of promise. When we make them nothing more than than an intellectual study or curiosity and don't truly take them to heart. God's word is shredded from our lives when we don't let our house 
households become households of faith where we share God's word, where we speak about it, where we study it and read it and grow in it. God's word is shredded in our lives when we, when we don't double down and we're silenced by the powers in this world, whether it be governments or our culture or neighbors or others who accuse Christianity of being intolerant and not politically correct or not woke enough or, or whatever. Satan, the ultimate paper shredder is there trying to silence us, trying to shred God's word from our world, from our culture, from our lives. And what does it bring to us? Hopelessness. Satan is at work shredding God's word just as King Jehoiakim did so in the year 604 B.C. And we see it in so many places and countries in this world. We've seen it in in communism, the old Soviet Union, or in in China today, or, or in countries in the Middle East. But we see it in our own country. We see it in our own culture, and sadly, sometimes we see it in our own lives. That's Satan's strategy. Keep people from God's word. But LBT's strategy is a little different. It's get God's word into the hands of people. This weekend we celebrate Lutheran Bible Translators Sunday. And here's the mission statement of Lutheran Bible Translators. LBT makes God's word accessible to those who do not yet have it in the language of their hearts. Every day LBT is launching an attack against Mr. Paper Shredder himself. How do they do so? Why do they do so? Well, there's over a billion people in this world that do not have the entire Bible written in their own heart language. And it's estimated that there are 165 million people that don't even have one Bible verse in their own language. Think about that. Not one Bible verse in their own language. Oh, yes, Satan's been at work shredding God's words of promise, keeping people in darkness and hopelessness. Satan's strategy has been witnessed by every generation, and that's why it's so important that we push back with God's word. Words like those rich gospel words that we find in the book of Romans. Romans 3, 23 and 24. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justly justified freely by the grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Or Romans 4, 25. He was delivered over to death for our sins and raised again for our justification. Or Romans 5, 1. Therefore, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. In Romans 5.20, where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. Our courage, our spine, our hope comes from the central teaching of God's word. And what is that? The word incarnate, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ crucified, crucified for our sinners. Christ crucified means that every gospel promise that we find in the book of Jeremiah or anywhere else in the Bible is true. We can trust it. We can rely upon it. We can take it to heart. Christ crucified means that God gives us a reason for hope and a future. Christ crucified means that he loves us with an everlasting love. Christ crucified means that our sorrow and our grief is turned into dancing and joy and celebration. Christ crucified means that our sin, our iniquity is forgiven. It's taken away and God declares us to be saints. Oh, what rich promises we have here in God's word. The word of God stands because Mr. Paper Shredder, Satan himself, 
cannot defeat the word made flesh, Jesus himself. O Pontius Pilate gave Jesus over to the shredders. As they shredded Jesus' back, preparing him, preparing him to be put to death on that ultimate instrument that they had at the time, the cross. Christ was crucified, suffered, and died, placed in the tomb. But was that the end of the story? Absolutely not. Satan could not silence Jesus even with death. For the word made flesh, Jesus has risen from the dead, and he brings to us such rich promises of hope and grace. In Matthew 24, verse 35, Jesus said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. In 1 Peter 1, 25, it says, The word of the Lord endures forever. Nothing, not even hell itself, can defeat God's word, can take it away, can overcome Christ, the word in the flesh. In fact, the exact opposite is reality. Take a look in your Bibles at Jeremiah 36, verse 32. It says, Then Jeremiah took another scroll, and he gave it to Baruch, who wrote on it at the dictation of Jeremiah, all the words of the scroll that King Jehoiakim, king of Judah, had shredded and burned in the fire. And many similar words were added to them. Let me repeat that last line again. And many similar words were added to them. Jeremiah says, you mess with my sermon, I'm going to add to it. God resurrected Jeremiah's scroll and then some. God responded to Jehoiakim's desire to shred God's word by giving him even more and more, adding to it. And there is the answer. When the world or, or our sinful lives, when Satan attacks us and shreds God's word, we add to it. Not just one page, but we bring all of Scripture and we place it there. And then we add more Scripture. Continually, each and every day of our lives, we keep adding and adding to it. I'm not going to add to this here. I don't want to break it, but you get the picture. We bury Satan in Holy Scripture. And Jeremiah's resurrected scroll was a preload to another resurrection of God's Word, the Word incarnate, Jesus Christ. We call it Easter when he rose from the dead. And oh, how amazed those who saw him alive were. Mary said, Rabboni. The disciples on the road to Emmaus said, were not our hearts burning within us when he talked to us? And Thomas, doubting Thomas, said, my Lord, my God. Alive with the life of Jesus and the breath of the Holy Spirit, God's word is living and active. And it announces to us the hopes of forgiveness and salvation and every gospel promise that God gives. It announces to us that good news, that, that weakness is power, loss is gain, and servanthood is greatness. It brings to us that victory that not even death can defeat us. We have a resurrection. We have our Lord Jesus Christ who brings to us hope and salvation. And wherever Scripture is studied and memorized and taken to heart, it is victorious over Satan's desire to shred God's Word through our lives. That's why Lutheran Bible Translators does more than just produce Bibles. Oh, sure, production is part of it, and that is very important. But they're also oftentimes dealing with cultures that are preliterate. 
partially literate. They're not at all. Books aren't a part of their culture, and so they live in that culture. They learn the language. They embrace the people. And then they translate God's words into their language so that the people will truly take it to heart and that it will be a transformation in their lives. The result, changed lives, saved lives. To all the paper shredders, we boldly confess, the word of the Lord endures forever. It cannot be defeated. And so we will help translate, publish, and send God's word to every corner of this world and to every aspect of our culture. We will receive God's word into our lives. We will take it to heart. We will trust those promises. We will live as if they are true. And by God's grace in our life, we will be bold to share God's word. Even when the world tries to silence us, we will double down. We will make God's word known. We will not be silenced. We will rededicate ourselves to receiving God's word in worship, in Bible study, to growing in God's word, and to sharing God's word with our neighbors and our friends and others in this world. By the grace of God, we will double down and we truly will become households of faith. Here we stand. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. We present our offerings to the Lord. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you give to us your word. We thank you especially for the word incarnate, the word in flesh, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Forgive us, O Lord, for the times when we try to remove or shred your word from our lives. And empower us, Lord, by your spirit, to take your word to heart, to find hope and joy and purpose in those words of promise you give, and by the working of your spirit to make us bold, to double down, to make God's word known to those in this world so that many others may come to know and trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also pray this day for those who are ill, for those who struggle with fear and uncertainty, for those who are in distress, for those who feel hopeless, for those who are timid, for all, O oh Lord, especially those we now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask, O oh Lord, that you'd bless the ministry of Lutheran Bible translators as they go about their work in translating your word into the language of peoples, that they may receive your word and that they may gr learn to know your promises and trust and rely upon you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we give thanks to you, O oh Lord, for daily bread for all the blessings you richly provide, for your grace and your mercy, which is new every day, for every single blessing. These things and all others, O oh Lord, we bring before you as we pray the prayer you've given to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. As always, it is, it is good to be with you, focused upon God's word. So a couple of uh, announcements for you. First of all, a reminder that Sunday school is in session following our Sunday worship service. So I invite you to, to uh, come attend the adult Bible study as we continue to delve into God's word there. Uh, bring your children or invite other children to come to Sunday school. Also, looking ahead to next week, next week we'll begin a special series entitled Households of Faith. It'll be a, a four-week sermon series as well as Bible study series that will have some video in it as well. And I invite you to come and participate in that. So I look forward to seeing you here in church and go in God's peace.